Hi, welcome to AB MBBS. Today's topic is Biostatistics Part 2. In this video, I will be talking about measures of central tendency, measures of variability, distribution, and finally, sample. So, first up is central tendency. Measures of central tendency include mean, median, and mode. Mean is the sum of all values divided by the number of values. Like, for example, say I give you 4 numbers, 2, 5, 15, and 10. Then, we add them up and the sum is 32. And on dividing it with 4, since there are 4 numbers, we get 8, which is the mean here. Next, we come to median. Median is basically the middlemost value when we arrange the given numbers in ascending or descending order. So, if I give you 5 numbers, say 2, 5, 15, 10, 4, then find out the median. First, arrange them in ascending order 2, 4, 5, 10, 15 and the middlemost value is median. Here it is 5 since it has two values both to its right and to its left. But this rule is only applicable when the given number of values is odd like in this case 5 values were given to us. What if the number of values given were like uh, were uh, even like 2, 6, 15, 10, 4 and 20. So once again arrange the uh, values in ascending order 2, 4, 6, 10, 15, 20. Find the middle two values in this case it will be 6 and 10 and find the mean of the two middle values that is 6 plus 10 divided by 2 equal to 8. So now the median is 8. Next we come to mode. Mode is the most frequently occurring value in a given set of values. So if the given values are 3, 5, 15, 10, 4, 3 then the most frequently occurring value here is 3. Hence the mode is 3. But what if there were two more if there were two modes? Like in this case where there are where both 3 and 5 are most common. Both of it works. Then here the total mode is the average of the two modes. So 3 plus 5 equal to 8 divided by 2 equal to 4. So mode is 4 here. Now in a normal Gaussian curve, mean, mean equal to median equal to mode. We will be coming back to Gaussian curve later in this video. As of now, you should know that there is something called left skew and something called right skew. In the left skew diagram, as you can see, the mode has shifted more to the positive side in comparison to the median and mean. So here, mode greater than median greater than mean. However, in the right skew diagram, mean has shifted more to the positive side in comparison to the median and mode. So here, mean greater than median greater than mode. Another thing, a while back, I spoke about what to do if two modes are present. Such a distribution is called bimodal pattern. In such cases, in such cases, a formula is used mode equal to 3 median minus 2 mean. If you can use this, you can use this formula in numerical based questions. Now, I will give you a set of numbers 2, 2000, 5, 10, 5. Here, mean of these 5 numbers will be 404. Mode will be 5 since 5 is repeated twice in the sequence. The median will also be 5 as you can see. These results give us a pattern. To understand the pattern, you have to first understand the concept of outlier. Outlier is a value that is totally different from the rest of the values. In this case, as you can see, the outlier is 2000 since it is much larger than the rest of the numbers. So the pattern that we can see is that the measure that is most susceptible to an outlier is mean. The one that is least affected is mode. So naturally, the most preferred measure of central tendency is median. Now, if I give you a line and divide the line into three parts, then each part will be called a tertile. And number of and the dividing points will be called intercepts. If I divide it into four parts, then it will be called quartile. And there will be three intercepts. Similarly, if for five parts, each part will be called pentile or quintile, and the number of intercepts will be four. For hundred equal parts, each part will be called centile or percentile and the number of intercepts will be 99. 
Next, we come to measures of variability. First up is range. It is the simplest measure of variability and is the difference between the highest and the lowest values. So, if the given values are 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, range can be expressed as 2 to 10 or simply as the difference of the highest and the lowest that is 10 minus 2 equal to 8. Next is mean deviation. It is divided, defined as the average of the deviations from the arithmetic mean. So, we basically first find the mean of the given values then subtract the mean from each of the individual values and summate the individual differences. Then finally divide it by the total number of values. For example, if I give you 4 numbers, say 10, 20, 30, 40, in order to find out the mean deviation of this set of numbers, first find out the mean. The mean of these numbers is 25. Then subtract 25 from each of these individual values given. Then summate the differences. Important thing to remember here is while summating, ignore the plus and minus signs. The summation is 40. 40 is divided by 4 since total number of values given is 4 and the result is 10. So the mean deviation is 10. Next, we come to standard deviation. Standard deviation is popularly denoted by sigma. Standard deviation is the root of the summation of the squares of differences between the individual values and the mean divided by n minus 1 where n is the total number of values given. For this formula, x is the individual value and x dash is the mean. This formula is perfect if number of values is given is less than 30. However, if the number of values given is more than 30, then just use n, don't use n minus 1. So if I give you the same set of numbers, say 10, 20, 30, 40, and ask you to find out the standard deviation, first proceed like how you would do in case of mean deviation by first finding out the mean, then subtracting the mean from the individual values. Next, square the individual differences and summate all the square differences. Then the summation here comes out to be 500. Finally, divide the summation that is 500 by n minus 1 that is 4 minus 1 equal to 3 here since the number of values given here is 4 which is less than 30, so n minus 1 root is applied. So divide 500 by 3 and 166.66 is obtained. Finally, the square root of the quotient is found out. That is square root of 166.66 is found out and that comes out to be 112.88 which is the standard deviation here. Next is the coefficient of variation. It does not have any unit and is used to compare dispersion of one variable with one another. It is given by the formula coefficient of variability equal to standard deviation by mean to be 100. Finally, there is z score. The z score is also called normal deviate. It indicates how many standard deviations away a particular observation is from the mean. It is given by the formula z square equal to individual level minus mean by standard deviation. Next, we come to distribution. Now, we have already discussed a few things about standard Gaussian curve and rights and left skew. Now I will tell you a few more points about a normal Gaussian curve. A normal Gaussian curve is bell shaped and symmetrical. This is the point where the mean, median and mode coincide. If we consider this to be the positive side and this to be the negative side of the curve, then these will be one and two standard deviations away from the midline on the negative and positive sides respectively. So in a normal Gaussian curve, mean plus minus one standard deviation mean covers 68.3% of the values and mean plus minus two standard deviation will cover 95.4% of the values. Mean plus minus three standard deviation will cover 99.7% of the curve. Also remember, in a standard normal Gaussian curve, standard deviation is one and variance is also one. Next, we come to the topic of sampling. Sampling can be of many types. First is simple random sampling. Here it is as the name suggests random. So each and equal, each unit of the population has equal chance of being selected. It is totally random, like lottery. So if I give you a set of numbers, suppose this set, and randomly choose this number, then that is simple random sampling. It is also called lottery method. Next is systematic random sampling. Here, every nth unit is chosen as uh, chosen as a sampling interval. So, 
if this are the this is the set of number uh, entire set of the population and i choose that every second number i will select then this this and this will be the sampling so every nth number we are selecting next then stratify the random sample here the sample is drawn from each strata at random in proportion to its size it gives a more representative sample means suppose that this is the sample then we divide it into three groups the ones with only one digit the ones with two digits and the ones with three digits now among the numbers values which are in the one digit we select one among those of two digits we select another one and among those of one digit we select another one this is stratified random sample then there are also some non random sample like convenience sample here it is as the name suggests at the convenience of the researcher there is no pattern next is quota sampling quota sampling is here the population is first segmented into mutually ex exclusive sub groups of quotas just as stratified sampling then judgment is used to select the units from each group non randomly it is also basically a type of convenience sample then there is snowball sampling this technique is used for drug users and commercial sex workers where existing study subjects recruit future subjects from their acquaintances basically to find it is used to find out hidden population then suppose we find out one drug abuser from that drug abuser we try to trace back that he was taught drug abuse from whom like that we trace backwards this brings to the end of this brings us to the end of this video you can also watch our other videos link is available here thank you for watching ab mbbs videos please do like share and subscribe our channel your support really motivates us to continue creating quality content on youtube you can also review our facebook page link is available in the description box below thank you and bye bye